Good morning, Year 4. I'm here with your topic lesson for the week. Um, I'm just going to start sharing my screen with you now. So you've been doing lots of research into pyramids um, over the last week. I thought we'd carry on with that today. Um, I just, just wanted to make sure you understood what was so amazing about these pyramids. So we are learning to understand why the pyramids are thought to be one of the wonders of the world. And we'll go on to talk in a little bit about what it means uh, for something to be one of the wonders of the world. So by the end of the lesson, you need to be able to explain what a pyramid is. You need to be able to understand what was involved in building a pyramid. And you should be able to wonder at how amazing the pyramids are. OK, I've got a challenge for you to start off with. Can you spot the false fact? The fact uh, fact A is the pyramids were mostly built for Egyptian kings. B is as many as 100 people were involved in building one pyramid. And C is sometimes the ancient Egyptians would mummify slaves to serve their pharaohs in the afterlife or a particularly nice pet. I'd like you to pause the video, read the fact again and try and work out which is the false fact. False fact. OK, your false fact is fact B. It's not 100 people involved. It was thousands of people involved. Amazing. OK, you have already written an explanation text about the pyramids. You wrote that last week. So you should be able to pause the video again now and just remind yourself of what you already know. Hopefully you came up with lots of things here for you know loads, you are pyramid experts. So just to remind you, the pyramids were built because the Egyptians thought that the pharaohs could live forever if their body was mummified. And they decided that the perfect thing to protect the pharaohs bodies and all the things that they, they believed they would need in the afterlife was a pyramid. So we are going to start wondering now at why these structures were so amazing. So let's start by thinking about the first pyramid. Now here's a picture of the first pyramid that it's believed was ever built. Um, so there are over 100 pyramids in Egypt. The first one is the Pyramid of Djoser. Apologies if I'm not pronouncing this right and I'm giving it my best guess. The Pyramid of Djoser. Built over 4,000 years ago, this is thought to be the oldest monumental structure in the world made from cut stone. Now you might think, oh, okay, yeah, that's all right. But just think, did we have machines back then? Did we have cranes to lift the rock? Okay. Just think, how would they have built such a big structure 4,000 years ago without all of the tools that we have nowadays? Really quite amazing. Now we're going to look at the most famous pyramids. The most famous pyramids are the pyramids at Giza. Lots of you found out facts about these last week. So these were built for three pharaohs, pharaohs and their families, and they were Khafre, Menkaure, and Khufu. Now the Pyramid of Khufu, which is sometimes called the Great Pyramid of Giza, which is the one lots of you found out about last week, is the largest of all the Egyptian pyramids. And it is widely considered to be one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. So lots of people over the years have come up with a list of what they think the seven most amazing things um, of the ancient world are. And you've got some pictures up here, you might recognize some of these. And they've created this list called the seven wonders of the ancient world. And most people agree that um, the Great Pyramid of Giza is on that list. Now this pyramid took 20 years to build. Can you imagine 20 years, more than double your life? Okay. And inside it is the body of the Pharaoh Khufu. It was built over 4,500 years ago and it was the tallest man-made structure in the world for over 3,000 years. I wonder how tall it actually is. Pause your video for a moment. I want you to write down a guess for me. How tall do you think the Great Pyramid of Giza actually is? So write down your guess now. Okay, I'm going to tell you. It is 146 metres high and 230 metres wide. 
Now, Big Ben, if any of you have ever been to London and you have seen Big Ben, Big Ben is only 96 metres tall, so it's much um, shorter than the 146 metres of this pyramid. It's amazingly tall, and it was all built by people's bare hands without machines. Okay, I'm going to amaze you even more now, I hope. Um, did you know that if the Great Pyramid of Giza was to be built again today, it would cost nearly four billion pounds? Four billion pounds, not millions, billions. And a French architect called Jean-Pierre Houdin estimates that it would take five years for a team of people to build it. And it would be a team of 2,000 workers working with bulldozers, cranes, and even helicopters. That's five years with the tools that we have available to us nowadays. I cannot imagine what must have gone into building that pyramid. Absolutely amazing. Okay, it's no wonder that they think it's one of the wonders of the world. Now, you might have seen this picture before. This is the Sphinx. Now, the Sphinx is a mythical creature. It's got a human head and the body of a lion. And the word Sphinx means father of dread or the terrifying one. Now, this sits next to the pyramids of Giza. Um, and it faces the sunrise and they put it there to guard the tombs. It's supposed to be scary, it's supposed to guard the tombs. Um, it's the largest stone statue in the world, it's over 73 metres long. Now you've all used metre sticks at school, you know how long a metre is. 73 metres long, 19 metres wide and 20 metres high. Okay, the eyes alone, have a look at the picture, look at the eyes, the eyes alone are six feet tall, so taller than me. The ears are over three feet tall and the nose, which isn't there anymore, okay, but the nose would have been nearly five feet long. Okay, I'm five foot six, so it would have been almost uh, as, as long as I am tall. It's absolutely amazing. Okay, we're gonna look at some other interesting pyramid facts now. So there's a pyramid called the Bent Pyramid. The, the Bent Pyramid at Dashur was created by accident and it was King Sneferu's attempt to build the first smooth sided or what they know now as true pyramid. Um, however, when they began building the 55 degree angle of the slope, they decided was too steep. So they thought it would be unstable. Um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't stay in place. So halfway up, they changed the angle to 43 degrees to make it more shallow. Now I included this one because I thought it was absolutely amazing that without uh, all the machines we have, they could be quite so mathematical in their calculations. Okay. The ancient Egyptians actually came up with their own engineering manual. Okay. That is absolutely amazing with the tools they had available to them. And let's think about the labor, how the pyramids were actually built. Now we don't know how many men it took to build a pyramid. People have estimated, and the historians think it's somewhere between 2,000 and 100,000. So we're really not sure. All we know is that it was a lot of people. Now, just to contextualize that for you, 100,000 people around about live in Cheltenham. So we're talking about every single person who lives in Cheltenham helping to build a pyramid. Okay, what a project. How would you even start trying to tell all those people what to do and to keep them all busy working. Something else they thought was interesting is that pyramid building would happen when the Nile was in flood, so when the River Nile was flooding. Why do you think they chose this time to build the pyramids? Why this time of year? Stop the video and have a think. Okay, the reason they did that is because it wasn't possible to farm the land. So all of these men were available to work on the pyramids. Okay, that makes sense, doesn't it? Considering how many men they needed. Um, right, secret entrances and trap doors. I thought this was quite cool. So from the outside, the pyramids look quite simple, don't they? They look like um, just quite plain structures. But inside, as you've already found out, there are various passages and chambers some of them have secret entrances and some of them have trap doors. It sounds like something from an exciting mystery story. So why do you think they use secret entrances and trap doors? Hmm. So you've got someone near you, have a chat with them. Why would they have used secret entrances and trap doors? 
just want you to think about what was inside the pyramids. Like the reason that they did this is to keep out the thieves. Okay, there were lots and lots of valuables in these pyramids, and they're all obviously also the bodies of of their special kings, their pharaohs. Um, so they put in these secret entrances and trap doors to try and keep out the thieves. However, it didn't really work. So um, despite all their efforts, nearly all of the pyramids were robbed of their treasures by 1000 BC. The hieroglyphics I want to show you now. So the chambers and the passengers, the passages, not passengers, the passages inside the pyramids uh, were really beautifully decorated and they were decorated with hieroglyphics. Now, if you cast your mind back to the beginning of our unit, we had a go at writing our name in hieroglyphics. Um, it's really, really intricate writing, which is made up of little drawings. Now, they didn't actually write this with a pen on the wall. They had to chip it into the stone. I think how much work must have been involved in carving pictures like this all down the passages, all around the chambers in stone. Again, it's another amazing fact. It shows you why these pyramids are so wonderful. Now, the, what they wrote about were stories of their kings. They wrote about their religious tales. They made requests for help from the gods in the journey to the afterlife. And they even wrote little warnings to any grave robbers to say, keep away, don't you dare steal the things inside this pyramid. If you steal these things, then bad things might happen to you. Um, the pyramids were filled with treasure. So these were items for the king to use in the afterlife. Um, have a think, if you were going to um, go to the afterlife, what would you take with you? What items would you like to be in a pyramid with you? Now the Khufu pyramid complex included five boat pits. I thought this was interesting, but the boat pits contained ships. Um, these ships probably never ever touched the water. So it's thought that they were perhaps there to uh, bring the king's body along the Nile to his tomb or for the king to use in the afterlife. What else was in the pyramid? See if you can remember, you did some great research last week. What else was in there? If you can come up with a list, pause the video, have a think. Hopefully you came up with uh, these things. So we've got mummies, gold, precious metals and rare jewels, masks, statues, jewellery, religious artefacts such as amulets and scarabs. They were talking about the scarab on the video we watched last week. Um, pets and servants, they would actually mummify uh, any special pets, they would mummify servants um, to go with them to the afterlife, so you really wouldn't want to be a servant of a king who died. Um, and they actually used to put weapons in the pyramids, just in case the kings had to fight any battles in the afterlife. Right, I've got a quiz for you now. How tall do you think the Great Pyramid is? I wonder if you can remember. It's 146 metres tall, taller than Big Ben. How many limestone blocks do you think were used to construct the Great Pyramid? How many of those blocks or bricks type things were used to construct the pyramid? Have a guess. Two million three hundred thousand. Two million three hundred thousand blocks that had to be chipped out of stone and then had to be built one on top of the other. Absolutely amazing. What a job. How much do you think each block weighed? You're going to be even more amazed by this now. Not only are there two million three hundred thousand, they weigh an awful lot. Have a guess how much you think they might weigh. Okay, each block weighs an average of two and a half tons. Now I am going to stop sharing my notebook with you for a moment. I'm going to share a website that contextualizes that a little bit for you. So have a look at this website. How heavy is two and a half tons? Uh, it's about one and one fifth times as heavy as a rhinoceros. So an adult black rhinoceros weighs between 2.1 tons 
or weighs about 2.1 tons. Um, it's one and three tenths times as heavy as a giraffe. This is one block, remember. It's two thirds as heavy as a hippopotamus. And it's one and a half times as heavy as a car. This is really, really heavy. And they didn't have a crane to lift these blocks, remember. Amazing. Right, I'm going to go back to my notebook now. So we have looked at lots of amazing facts about the pyramids today. And hopefully you now have an idea about what made them quite so special. So you are going to create an amazing facts page today. I don't want you to write, there are hundreds of pyramids in Egypt. I don't want you to write all of the facts which are really believable. I want you to write down the ones which are amazing. Okay, that really blow your socks off. So you've got to make it clear to me why the pyramids are considered one of, one of the seven wonders of the world. Okay, in your work I'd like you to use some really good adjectives so you might talk about these outstanding structures the magnificent pyramids you might talk about how they are wonderful how they are sensational how they are remarkable or tremendous so have a look at those adjectives that I have put there for you now it is entirely up to you how you present your work today I just want to see some work that shows me why these pyramids are amazing. Okay, what is astonishing about them? What makes them quite so special? Um, so I put some examples of how you might choose to present your work. So this is my first example. I filled in the first two boxes. So I've got uh, 10 astonishing reasons the pyramids are amazing. So reason number one, these tremendous structures were built over 4,000 years ago before we had machines to cut rock and cranes to lift it. And I've used my adjective tremendous. Okay, number two is each magnificent limestone block weighed 2.5 tonnes. This is heavier than a car. So I only want those really amazing facts. Uh, this is another way you might present it. I've got a picture of somebody looking really amazed and puzzled. And I put my facts around my picture. Still using my lovely adjectives. Ignore that exhausted on the bottom of the page. Um, right, and I also thought another way you might like to, to present it is as a comic strip. So I called my comic strip, Prepare to be Amazed. And I just filled in the first box as an example for you. This is a picture of me and it says, hi, I'm Mrs. Cross. I'm here today to help you understand what is so special about the ancient Egyptian pyramids. Okay, in my next box, I might talk about how much each block weighed. And then I might say, oh, did you realize that they needed to use millions of blocks to build a pyramid? And then I might talk about how um, things like boats were found in the pyramid. And isn't that weird? Okay, so there are lots and lots of interesting facts that you could share. You are going to write the long day and the Walt in your home learning book. So pause the video while you do that. Okay. And then when you have done that, you can either draw your work straight onto the lines, if that's what you'd like to do, or you can do your work on a separate piece of paper and glue it in. Um, I will provide you with the, there's a table that I have drawn just in case you'd like to use that table to do a comic strip. Um, right, once you have finished your work, I'd like you to congratulate yourself on a really great job. And I'd like you to take that work and show it to somebody in your house and amaze them. See you soon, year four.